Here we go. We're recording. So thank you all for joining us tonight. I know, well, I guess it depends where you are. Lauren, what time is it where you are? It is 3 p.m. I'm in Hawaii, yes. so it's 3 p.m. here. Uh, I saw you on the beach. I was like, oh, gosh, I wish I could be there right now for real. <laughs> Um, so after years of doing this business between all of us, we've noticed um, that those interested in the opportunity tend to have the same reservations. And so we wanted to take this evening to just talk to you all about these reservations, have an open discussion. We obviously have some notes and things prepared, but we want this to be more of a Q&A. So feel free to type what you want in the chat. I think we should be able to see it just going to tell you all this is our first time using this system so we're going to figure out the little bugs and kinks with you um, but we figured we would just start tonight by telling you our quick beauty counter stories so since I'm talking I'm just gonna keep rolling um, so I'm Kate I always say I'm Kate Markovitz, also known as Holistic Kate, because that's how most people uh, refer to me in Beauty Counter world anyway. Um, I'm an executive director with Beauty Counter. I am also working to build my motherhood grace business with the Postpartum Grace Guide. And my most important job is being a mom to my almost three-year-old daughter, Charlotte. And how I got involved with Beauty Counter was really in 2016 when I was struggling with fertility and trying to find products that performed well and fit my criteria for being like makeup and fun, um, but were also, also safer for my health because I was always a product junkie and um, I just wanted to make sure that I could still have my products, but then also have the safety piece as I was working on fertility. And so I found Beauty Counter through the charcoal bar and the charcoal mask. Um, I still use the mask every single week. It's one of my top favorite products. And I am probably not like a lot of you. I went to the website, I did some quick math, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna sign up as a consultant because I'm gonna save some money. Click, <laughs> and there I was, a consultant. Um, at the time, I was building a nutrition business, so I, I was you know, an affiliate for some supplements, and I just figured I would use Beauty Counter that way. Maybe I would write a blog post, share my link there, and just kind of be done with it. And that's really what I did for about a year. I didn't really do much with the business. And then um, about three months postpartum, I had a colicky, silent reflux, hard to feed, tiny newborn, and I was like, whoa, I cannot go back to the way I was working before. I need to look at some other options of how I'm going to still work because that's really important to me, but also be able to show up as a mom. And I just didn't know what that meant <laughs> before I actually had her. So um, I decided to to really pursue Beauty Counter and the business opportunity. I started sharing it more consistently. I was talking about how you clean up your food products and um, the products that you're putting on your skin. And people were listening and they were hungry for that information just as I was. I realized that um, people were kind of on the same path. I was just like a year ahead of them. And so people wanted to join my team. I was willing to help them. I love the mentoring piece. It's really fulfilled. Um, a lot of my purpose and now here I am <laughs> how many years later that's about it's been about two and a half years since I really started building my business and it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made so there's my short recap four years <laughs> Naomi why don't you tell us your story hi everybody my name is Naomi Nakamura I am also uh, a beauty kind of consultant this April will be almost four years. I'm a senior director and I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. I am not married. I don't have kids. But like Kate, I was also starting a nutrition business. I had just graduated from nutrition school. But prior to that, so let's back up a couple more years before that, I was an endurance athlete and I was, I thought at the time that I was really healthy. I was training for marathons. I had changed my diet to be mostly whole foods, I was gluten-free, um, but I didn't realize how sick I was and I had all of these health issues and I, through a friend of mine, discovered um, what functional medicine was. And so I was back in 2013, I started seeing a functional medicine doctor and she had um, made me aware of a lot of things I wasn't aware of, particularly around, I, had a, I was struggling with a lot of hormone uh, dysfunction. 
And she, I'd worked with her closely for about two years and a lot of things improved and some things just weren't. I was really, really frustrated. And she was the one that brought to my attention that a lot of the products that we use on our skin in cosmetics and in beauty have harmful ingredients. And I had no idea, like Kate, I was a product junkie. I was not into skincare, but I was very much into cosmetics and makeup. And what happened was, is that that day she told me all of that, I came home and I was the girl who would go to Nordstrom's and sign up for all of the private classes that they have in the back conference rooms. And so I had like five bins of MAC makeup and Urban Decay and all these other Bobby Brown. And I just, I threw it all out. And it was just an emotional decision. And then I was like, crap, what am I going to do? So I have some friends who are makeup artists and I would ask, ask them questions about, well, what can I use instead? And you know, I went to Sephora, I went to um, Ulta, and people were talking to me about cruelty-free and vegan products, which are very important, but none of them spoke to, well, what about human safety? So I spent a full year looking for things that I didn't know what I was looking for. And during that year, I went through the whole coconut oil, apple cider vinegar coming from someone who was using products from the department store. It was not working for me. And I happened to see probably the same post that Kate saw on Instagram of the charcoal bar, clicked on it, was like, what is this beauty counter? Googled it, went down this rat hole of just searching for, you know, what is this company about? What products do they have? And everything on their website, all of their copies spoke to the things that I was concerned about. So I signed up without trying a single product. I just, I am brand loyal and I'm like, this is it for me. And I came into the business, not thinking about building a team. In fact, I really, really didn't know anything about the business model. I am not someone who is familiar with um, any direct retail network marketing businesses other than my mom used to buy Avon when I was a kid and I would grab her catalog and turn to the back pages to see what were the kid products. And I went to a Tupperware party every now and then. I didn't know anything about the business model, but I signed up because just coming out of nutrition school, I was also working with clients who were also struggling with hormone dysfunction. And I thought this is a solution that I can offer them. And so that's really how I work my business. I mean, I had these small group of clients and that really was it. I didn't really pay attention to much else. And being on a single income in the San Francisco Bay Area, the cost of living was growing at a more rapid pace than my, I have a full-time job, than the salary of my full-time job. And I thought, what am I going to do here to be able to continue living here and not be forced out of the area? And I realized that, you know, building a nutrition business takes time and it takes a lot of hard work, but with Beauty Counter, because there was interest in it, people were asking me about it, and I realized if I put more focus on it, I can give myself a raise. And I did, and just by putting more focus and energy into it, um, I got more involved with my team, with the, Kate and I, we're on team Build a Beautiful Business, and you know, people wanted to hear more, and they wanted to join my team, and so here I am, I think, Almost two years later, I have um, a great team, and that's my beauty counter story. Probably a lot longer than what I planned to say. <laughs> so, Lauren, it's your turn. Well, we get passionate when we start talking about this stuff because it's so important to us. Um, and so, for me, I, my name is Lauren Ferreter. I am a nutritional therapy practitioner as well, and I'm a director with Beauty Counter. And um, for me, my story starts kind of back when I was um, not so newly postpartum, but about six mo months postpartum. I had like kind of come out of that fog of newborn first baby, and I was starting to feel like I wanted to put some of my energy towards something else. Um, I had a nutrition background, and so I thought, okay, let's do this. Let's do this nutrition gig. Um, but once I, I, I did a little bit of nutrition work, but I was also looking for some other source of income. Um, and I stumbled upon Beauty Counter. The flexibility of it really appealed to me. Um, and so I was hopped on a call very similar to this with um, my mentor, Cassie Garcia of Fed and Fit and Liz Wolf, who wrote um, Eat the Yolks. And um, hearing them talk about it and having followed them for so long and trusting their opinions. And they are both, if you aren't familiar with them, they're both bloggers. They've both written books. Um, and so I, I really loved all the things that they had to say about the trajectory of the company, um, all the, the 
business opportunity as well as the mission behind it. Um, and so I was totally on board with the mission. And then Liz Wolf said that this was the most lucrative business decision she had ever made. And I was like, sign me up, <laughs> like, let's do it. Um, and so I, you know, I love being a stay at home mom. Um, and so I wanted to be able to continue that lifestyle as much as possible. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where I started a little bit over two years ago, two and a half years ago. And, um, you know, when I got into this, I actually knew that I wanted to make a business out of it. I wasn't really sure how the recruiting piece would go, but I decided to build a key, a team because I think that this mission to get safer products into the hands of everyone is so important that if we aren't sharing this mission and this company with other people that we aren't going to make the type of change that we actually want in the industry and so that's really important to me I also know what a huge blessing this business has been on my life and on my family um, and so I feel like it's my responsibility to share that with other people so here we are loving this still two and a half years later and I don't think I've regretted my decision one single time. All right, so. Hard that. <laughs> woo. Uh, so we're gonna move on and get into kind of the background on Beauty Counter. Probably a lot of you know this, um, kind of the background, but we just wanted to kind of remind you because these are the, this is why we exist. So Kate is gonna take this part for us. Sure. Nope, that's not right. <laughs> Naomi is gonna take this part for us. <laughs> Okay, so when you think of Beauty Counter, you probably think of, and this is what I did for a long this time, I thought, oh cute, they thought of a name that's like the, the department store makeup counter, like Beauty Counter, but that's not really the intention of the name of the company. And, you know, the name of the company is meant to be a counter to the beauty industry, because as you know, so much of the beauty industry is unregulated, and the people in the industry know of the... Um, the loopholes that we have and how a lot of the ingredients in the products that they use aren't safe or aren't even tested for human safety. So we don't even know if they're safe or not. And so our CEO, Greg Renfrew, started the company seven years ago today with the intention of um, doing it in a different way. So countering the beauty industry, which everyone told her, you know, it, that's good luck with that because good luck getting in investors because she, she says herself, she didn't set out to create another beauty brand. She set out to build a company of change. And so like, actually the three of us are listening to a book right now and it talks about disruptive brands and Beauty Counter considers herself a disruptive brand because we're trying to bring change to the industry in a way that no other company has before. And so one thing that, there's many things that differentiate Beauty Counter from other beauty brands. And one of the main things is that we are a B Corporation. And if you've never heard of a B Corporation, it is a certification, it's a global certification. So there's companies all over the world that have achieved this global certification. And what this means is that it's an independent organization, B Corporation, and they have set standards of what companies need to meet. And when, the, when they meet the certification, this company has demonstrated that they are doing business in a socially responsible way where they care for their people and they care for the planet. So they're doing things that are environmentally conscious and they're people, planet, and profits. So a lot of people think that um, corporations are evil and making money is, is a bad thing and people are just greedy and money hungry. But with the B Corp certif certification, we're saying, no, it's okay to be a for-profit business and there is a way to do it that's socially conscious. And so the companies that, that carry the B Corporation certification have met standards that say like, okay, this company means what they say and they're actually putting, um, they're putting their money where their, they're putting their money where their mouth is, is that the saying? Okay. And so for Beauty Counter, there's, Every, I think it's like every two years, every three years, or maybe they have to go through the recertification process. So it's not just, you know, you got it one time and, you know, three years later, the company might stray away from what they said. And so they have to renew the certification to make sure that they're still in compliance. And you have to receive a certain score in order to get the certification on Beauty Counter. I think in order to get the B Corp, you have to get a 55. And our last certification, Beauty Counter scored a 95. 
or you have to get an 80 and beauty counter scored a 95, which is very, very high. And so there's a lot of initiatives that are going on in the company where we are continuing to try and make that um, a higher score. So some other companies that have also achieved B certification are Athleta, um, which is great because Athleta is a gap company. So it's so wonderful that this global brand that's so widely known, this entity of it has achieved this and they're very proud of it. I've, I've gone into the stores to talk to them about it. Other B corporations are like Eileen Fisher um, and Ben and Jerry's is another one. So for me, it's definitely made an impact on how I decide to spend my dollars where if I see a company as a B Corp, I know that they are trying to do good things. And so that influences my decision as well. So that is just one way that Beauty Counter stands out as a brand from other companies in our industry. Awesome. Okay, cool. And then the next way that we stand out is our ingredient selection process. And you may have seen numbers floating around. Um, for a long time, it was that Beauty Counter banned 1,500 ingredients um, from our use in our products. Um, that number recently has gone up to 1,800 ingredients that are banned. Um, and to give you some perspective, in the European Union, they ban or restrict 1400, around 1,400 ingredients. In Canada, it's around 600 ingredients, and in the US, it is only 30. So we are woefully behind. Um, we are doing something that is not required of us by you know, government standards, um, but we basically screen ingredients before we ever consider their use in our products. Um, every potential ingredient, we look through the research um, to check for hazards like cancer, developmental toxicity, hormone disruption, infertility. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Santa Monica this summer and we got to meet with the lead toxicologist on our staff and his PhD was in, um, was in uh, developmental toxicity as it relates to um, like prenatal care. So um, he's wildly, wildly smart um, and so brilliant. And so it was really fun to hear him talk about all the research and all that we do. Um, so we're always learning. So we have, if there isn't research on a specific product, then we go and have the research done. We have partnered with Tufts University, um, specifically a, looking to see how ingredients are affecting hormones. And so we're learning a lot from that partnership. Um, and then we source responsibly. So we're choosing the best natural, sustainable, and synthetic ingredients that we can. Um, over 80% of our ingredients are natural, but we do have some safe synthetics that we use in there as well, because we know that they are safe and they work well. Um, and then we are very transparent about this. You can see every ingredient, you can see where it was derived from, um, any intentional um, preservatives, anything is listed on our website. We recently came out with a heavy metals report that shows um, how often, Kate's gonna talk about that, but we should, <laughs> that's coming up. But anyway, so I mean, just to give you the picture that there's the ingredient selection process is so in depth and is, is so much more than any, I've heard any other company doing. Every time I hear it, I get like goosebumps because I'm like, we are just the best. I'm like so proud when I hear other people talk about the company. I'm so used to talking about the things that I love about it. And then I just hear everything about Beauty Care. I'm like, yeah, we're pretty darn cool. So 2020, we're going to get even better because we have seen a lot of companies. I mean, imitation is the greatest form of flattery, right? So we've seen companies coming out with like our no-no list, the dirty list, and hey, we don't use 8,000 ingredients. And then you look at it and you're like, because you would never put those things in personal care products anyway. But what 2020's hashtag from Beauty Counter, we are going hashtag beyond clean. So clean beauty really is having a moment right now. It's a hot topic in the news. Once we get past this coronavirus, we'll come back around. Um, and it, that is totally amazing. It's really, you know, the rising tide lifts all ships. I always say that wrong. Pretend I said it right. Um, but Beauty Counter is truly going to take that even higher in 2020. And it's going to be really hard for other companies to catch up. The perfect example of this is the MICA documentary. If you haven't seen that already, it is on the website. And it's basically showing how we are going through our entire supply chain and making sure that they are, you know, putting, that they are really doing what they're telling us that they're doing. Um, we're going, what's it called? Why can't I think of the word? 
we're going and visiting them um, and making sure right. that auditing, there's the word, we're going and auditing all of our suppliers, suppliers in the MICA um, space and we're taking the consumer along with us so you can see what is actually happening. It was heartbreaking, especially because one of the things I found interesting, um, obviously Beauty Counter had to start making this documentary many, many months ago, but then there was another article that came out about mica and child mining um, that was like a month before we released our documentary and that like hit me to the core. It was terrible to watch. Anywho, we're getting more sustainable in our packaging. So we're moving to glass where it can be appropriate. We're getting rid of second plastics. We're getting rid of extra boxes where we can. So really making sure that we're stepping up our packaging game, making sure things are recyclable and helping to make that easy for the consumer. Because even for myself, I have to be honest, I am like not an intuitive recycler. <laughs> I'm like, I see all the things at Whole Foods. I'm like, all right, I'm starting to sweat. Which one do I put it in? Is somebody watching me? I don't really know. Um, so we're trying to make it easy for everyone. Um, as Lauren mentioned, we came out with a heavy metals report. I came across this research when I was looking into Beauty Counter. I saw some bloggers being like, that they, we weren't very transparent with the heavy metals. And I always felt like, oh, okay, maybe we don't say exactly, but now we came out with our report. You can go do a deeper dive into the heavy metals, take a look at all that, what we do for the testing. And we have a lot more on the way. What's really exciting is we are all, well, at least the three of us, um, and anyone who chooses to join us as a consultant is going to be hearing more about this in our virtual lead um, conversation that's going to be going on tomorrow. Is tomorrow? No, Friday. Today is Wednesday. I swear I'll get something right here. Um, and so we're going to hear from Lindsay Dahl, who, if you guys don't follow her, she's beautycounter.hill.nerd. I learned so much from her on Instagram. Definitely go check her out. Um, but she is going to be updating us on how we are going to get better in the Beyond Clean movement as we go through 2020. So do you guys have anything to add to that? All right, here we go. We're jumping into our myths. <laughs> so the five myths of Beauty Counter. The first myth that we want to start with is, well, this is a pyramid scheme, right? No, false. This is not a pyramid scheme. Um, and I'm going to read you the exact definition because I want to make sure I describe a pyramid scheme, the, the, the formal definition. It is a fraudulent money-making scheme, well, right there, illegal, in which early participants are paid out of money received from later recruits, with the final recruits putting money in and getting nothing back. Pyramid schemes are absolutely illegal. So <laughs> what's always funny, especially when you actually read that definition, you're like, okay, well, where's the product? People are just putting money in. And I think the reason people say pyramid scheme is because they are thinking of MLM, which means multi-level marketing, which when you would draw out like a multi-level marketing, perhaps you could describe it as a pyramid looking shape. So I understand where people are getting those terms confused. And uh, we are going to discuss a little bit more about MLMs and maybe this quote, like MLMs are bad idea, but Beauty Counter does have a unique structure. And I want to really bust that myth right here on, on how Beauty Counter's model is laid out. So we're called um, a multi-channel direct sales. So we do have our MLM type structure with our consultant. So you can absolutely shop with a consultant. We have a website where you can shop on the website with a consultant or without a consultant. So you can go to beautycounter.com just like you go to nordstrom.com, just like you go to any other. I mean, I don't shop in person anymore. So just like I do any of my shopping, you can go to beautycounter.com, buy what you want to buy, and you do not have to credit to anyone. Um, we have limited time partnerships, so we've gone into places like Target and J. Crew. I even think the fun one um, today with Lisa Con. How do you say her last name? Condren. Condren. Something like Condren. that. You you got it. I'm not gonna try again. Um, but we, you know, doing a limited time partnership with her. I think they're gonna be doing a lot more. This is just my theory. I don't know this, but I think there's gonna be a lot of those kind of fun things in the future. And then one of the really cool things is that we have actual retail locations. 
Um, so we have one new in New York City, we have one in Denver, um, we have pop-ups that happen around the country different times in Boston, Nantucket, and I have had friends who have gone, one of my girlfriends goes to Nantucket in the summer, and she sent me a picture, she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know there was a store, and she went and she's like, I just bought some more face cream because I needed it and you got credit. She just thought it was like the coolest thing. And I think it's the coolest thing too. I haven't even been to any of the stores yet. Um, but one of the things I, th I think that's just so cool because there's really not another company out there that has all of these different options. We're really meeting consumers where they want to be. So if you want to go into the store, we do have these locations. If you just want to shop online, don't want to get involved, any consultant following up with you, you can do that too. Um, so we're making it very easy for you. Do you want me to add in my thoughts on that? If you want to, yep. <laughs> so just getting back to the whole perception about multi-level marketing and pyramid schemes is I work for a very large corporation and I don't work in sales, but I'm very familiar with the sales organization in my company. And the way Beauty Counter is structured is no different than any other sales organization. So in my company, there is, you know, there's many levels of VP of sales. And then you have sales managers, and then you have the field, people who are working on the front line, and everyone on the front line has their quota, I guess you could say, of numbers that they need to, to reach. And they all work pretty much on a primarily commission-based salary. And so the sales managers maybe don't have as high a quota, but then they, they are getting a cut of the sales and the things that the front line brings in, the field brings in. And the same goes through all the way up to the VP. So in the nature of Beauty Counter's consultant organization, because like Kate said, we were multi-channel. So in, in the consultant organization, the way that works is really no different than a sales organization in a company. It's just in a company, they're probably selling to another company, so B2B, whereas we're obviously B2C, or you could even say that we're C2C, consumer to consumer. Um, the other thing I just want to point out, what Kate said, is that, remember, Beauty Counter started seven years ago. And so the way we shop now, we weren't even shopping that way back then. So it's a really innovative approach. So if you, I mentioned that my mom used to shop in Avon, right? Avon, I don't even know if they're still around. I guess they are. I don't know. I mentioned I would go to Tupperware. I don't know if Tupperware is still around. I guess they are. Um, and so these, this is a very, um, the way they did business has been around since I was a kid. I'm in my 40s. So it's a very older business model. And so we're taking that business model and looking at how can this be relevant today and we're innovating it. So yes, we have the consultant base, which by the way, a large part of our B Corp score of the people part is that we empower women to have their own businesses. So the independent consultant piece is a large part of our B Corp score. But along that lines is, you know, we understand how today's modern consumer shops. If somebody, is wearing a pair of Rothy's and I'm like, what is that? Do you have a link? Send me your link. This is just what we automatically ask our friends these days because it's just ingrained with our culture today. So it's really the same thing as like, we shop by, a, you know, recommendations from our friends. Sometimes we like to go to stores so that we can touch, feel, smell, but we also shop online. So it's a really innovative and forward thinking approach that started seven years ago. Okay, so second myth is that you have to spend a lot of money up front or every month. And so here's the deal, not the case with our company. When you enroll with Beauty Counter, you are not required to purchase any product if you do not choose to do so. There's an enrollment fee of $98, but that includes products. You get a peel, you get a full-size lip lipstick, you get marketing materials, um, you get sample packs to send out to that you can use to send out to folks, um, and then you're getting access to your website, training materials, as well as swag, which is always fun. Um, and so I would say that all three of us would recommend that if you are wanting to do this as a business, we do recommend that you start with some personal product. Um, and that what you're going to do with that is you're going to use that to let potential customers try out, feel, touch, smell the brand. So you're going to use that in in-person events, drop-off kits, which you can talk more, we can talk more about that later. Um, 
So I, so that's why we do recommend you getting some products at the beginning, but again, it's not required. When I started out, I knew that I was going to do this as a business and I bought the biggest <laughs> kit available because like, I'm never going to get a discount this big. I might as well do it. Um, and I know for Kate, Kate was going into this. I just want a discount. So she didn't get anything. And so along the way she has had to use... <laughs> She's had to use her 25% off discount to build up those products that she wants to allow, like let other people use and try out. So that's why all of us kind of stand on this side of things where it's much more, it makes a lot more sense for you to buy the products up front. Um, if you, it's going to take you a few months to save up that money in order to do that, then I think all of us would recommend that you do that. Um, so there's also no minimum sales required every single month. There's no minimum that you have to sell to in order to get paid. A lot of companies require you reach a certain amount. Um, for us, if you sell a lip gloss, you get paid on that lip gloss. You get your commission on that and that's period said and done. Um, we do not carry inventory, which is very different than a lot of companies. Um, we're actually discouraged against doing that. Um, like I said, we do have that product that is used for samples and for people to try out, but we're not holding and selling out of our own inventory. Um, orders ship directly from our warehouse, and that makes it really clean for the consultant, easy for the customer. Um, and so that's, that's the way that our stuff is, is structured. Yeah, that's actually really nice. My sister-in-law will be like, hey, do you have this cleanser? I'm like, no, but now we have access. I can just go in and order it for her. It's like easy peasy, right? Um, okay, myth number three, you have to beg your family and friends to buy from you or join your team. This was my fear. <laughs> this is probably why I was like, nope, not going to do this. Um, I was involved with another MLM like pre like five years previous to joining Beauty Counter. And I did feel like I was just begging people to care about what I cared about and was not interested in doing that again. But what's different about this company is do your friends like skincare and makeup? And do they like beauty tips? Do they like knowing how to apply their makeup? Do they like makeup going on well? Uh, do they like free samples? Maybe some girls' nights. Maybe it's just like an excuse to get away from the husband and kids. Um, maybe do you like sharing? I love educating people. I was a teacher in a way previous life. Um, and I, so I love doing all of that. And I, I really just empathize with this concern because when I did start looking at the beauty counter opportunity, I still didn't tell my family and friends that I was doing it for another about four to five months. I talked to more like cold audiences. I talked to people that I had helped through nutrition programs, 21 day sugar detoxes. And then around holiday, when the holiday products came out, I was starting to think like, you know what? I think my mother-in-law would actually really love that set. And I'm going to get this for my sister. Maybe I should like let them know that I do this. And I had so many, I had, they were like begging me to support, you know, they're like, we didn't know you were doing this. I just went to Sephora the other day. And so I was like, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. I didn't even tell them that I was doing this. Um, and so I think when you lead from a place of service and you're really, let me like help you, you know, you don't even have to necessarily be like, what's your skin type? Here's what you need to buy. It, it can be more of the education piece. Here are the things that you should look for. Here's our never list. These are the things that you do not want to have on the back of your products. Take it home. If there's something that you want to replace, I will come and help you or I can help you. Um, and that's always how I lead and teach my team to lead is give the service, be of help to other people, and um, they're going to come to you. They're going to want your help because this is confusing. It is, it's even more confusing than the food industry, right? Um, and the cool thing is you, that you do not have to build a team. If that is something that you want to do, of course, we all are big advocates of doing that. And I think it's a very great way to build a sustainable business, but you can earn 25 to 35% commission on your own sales. And truly up until last year, over half of my paycheck, 60, 75% of my paycheck came from my own sales anyway. Um, once I started getting a larger team, that is where it started to balance out a little bit more, but I was still carrying most of my income just from my personal sales and focusing on my own business. And I have been part of many affiliate, well, 
affiliate programs over the years. And a majority of those are like five to 15% on your sales, or maybe you get, you know, a kickback on the first time that somebody orders. So if you're thinking of this more as an affiliate program, it is a fantastic affiliate program. You're going to get that commission on every order that somebody places with you. All right, number four, you will get rich quick, <laughs> or that only the people at the top are earning money. So everybody, the way when they set up our compensation plan, they really wanted to make sure that you could have a thriving business, even if you were just having your own sales without recruiting anybody. Um, and so I want to share kind of my experience with it. Um, I, when I started off, I was essentially silent on social media. I wasn't using social media hardly at all. Um, and so I basically just did the like things that they talk about doing. Um, so I did my first month, I hosted two in-person socials. I hosted my own social and then a friend of mine hosted a social. Um, I, or a pop-up is what we call them now. Um, I've been in this for a long time. We've changed the names of this thing. Um, and then we, um, I dropped off products to friends. Um, I like took a basket of products over to my neighbor's house unannounced and was like, hey, try these out. She's one of my best customers to this day. Um, I sent out an email to my friends and family just telling them, hey, this is what I'm doing. And then I did a couple of posts on social media, kind of same sort of thing. And my first month, I got a $700 paycheck. And like, I'm not, I, I don't have a huge social media following. I hadn't built up a business for all of these years, you know, that I was relying on. Um, so it, it really has to do with what you put in, the work that you put in and what comes, comes out. It pays, pays in dividends for that. Um, and so I made $700 my first month. I don't think I made $700 my second month. So it's not, it is just, it's, it's hard work. It's you, you put in the effort for it. Um, if you, I can't touch on this. If you decide to build a team, you will get paid a very, like a small commission on their sales. Um, but your the majority of your paycheck is really going to be based on your own personal sales and your own work. Um, so you can think about when you start to build a team and you get a little bit of a paycheck, it's like a manager getting a raise for starting to manage people. Um, so you are going to be contributing to their businesses just by like mentoring them and helping them. And so that's, that's where that extra bonus comes from. Also, just to tack on to what Lauren said, there is actually a limit where the way our comp plan is structured is that you only get paid three levels down. And then if you like have legs beyond that, that it stops there. So it's not like the people at the very top who I'm like five or six legs away are making all of this money off of me. Like it's, there are stop gaps there. So, and we are not going to get into those details here, but just keep that in mind. So the fifth myth is that this business is predatory. So a lot of what I have to say about that has already been said. So our starter kits are optional. They are not required. The only thing that's required is the consultant enrollment fee, which then you get access to our training. You get your backend business system where the company will provide you a fulfillment center. Like they give you a website that people can shop with you. They do all the warehousing, how fill your product. Um, you get two free, not free, but you get two full size products included in your start, in your enrollment fee. You get business builders, a tote. So it's a really, um, I think it's priced well under what it's actually worth. And so like, like we said, if you do come in wanting to start a business, then the starter kits and we have multiple options are recommended because you really need product to start a business. And so the starter kits are deeply discounted at the time of enrollment. And again, this is all to set you up to have success in your business. And we haven't even got into this, but once you do become a consultant, we actually have mapped out a plan. We call it our start counting plan. And that is a roadmap. It's completely optional, but it's a roadmap designed to help the consultant earn their investment back in their first 90 days. Um, it does take work. It does take effort. But if that is something that you are serious and you want to do, it's there for you. Um, the other thing we have is that, like they said, we, it's really frowned upon for us to carry inventory. 
So I know that I have some customers who are like, hey, I'm going out of town this weekend. We're going to the beach. Do you have any sunscreen? I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't. I happen to have my own that you're more than welcome to use, but we don't carry products. And I know um, some other companies do require you to purchase all of your inventory up front, and then you kind of have to manage it, the fulfillment part on your end. That is something that is definitely not encouraged. In fact, if you if they pick up on someone's doing that, it's gonna raise red flags because perhaps that person might be reselling it on Amazon or something like that. And that's definitely not, the company does not want us to do that. Um, the other thing is, is like they said, we do not have monthly minimums. Even as consultants, we don't have any requirements about you have certain numbers. We don't have quotas that you have to meet every month. We do have a six month requirement, which um, I think is pretty um, achievable. And then, and this is going to go back to your team culture. And so it's really important to decide, um, I guess, which team you join. And the three of us are on a, we're all on the same extended team. But I know for me, and I know the same with Lauren and Kate, is that I don't push anyone on my team to do anything beyond what they want to do. So the only thing that I ask of my team members is that they communicate with me what their goals are. Because if they communicate and say, I really want this as a business, I'm gonna need your mentorship and guidance, and I'm gonna need your accountability. If they've given me that permission, I will be there to push them. If And I have many team members who are like, I'm just here for the discount. I'm like, great, thank you for telling me that. I'll leave you alone and you you know where to find me if you need something, you know? And so it's, if, if you feel like someone is pushing you and really anything that you do, I think you just need to communicate that. But I know that is definitely not the culture of Beauty Counter. It's not the culture of our team. And so I think it's really important that as you explore, if this is something you want to do, that you have that conversation with the person who invited you and say, well, how do you mentor? What is your mentoring style? And I know that for our team, that is definitely not, our mentoring style. We really um, leave it up to you to decide what you want as your business. We are just here to support you and however you want to, to manage that. Yep, totally. And I think too, the, the cool thing about Beauty Counter is like we've kind of mentioned, you could play, you could honestly pay that enrollment fee and not <laughs> pay another dime of your own. Um, you know, that's not necessarily the best way to build a business after doing it for, for many, many years. But that's what we mean by predatory is a lot of other companies will require you to keep investing, keep investing, keep investing, um, at whether you like need it or not. I mean, I haven't placed a personal order since holiday because I loaded up when the holiday products came out and I was just like, I don't need anything right now. Um, and so that's kind of nice to have that. So we actually have a bonus myth for you that we wanted to talk about. Woohoo! <laughs> and that is that you have to spend tons of hours on this business. That is not the case. Um, it totally depends on your goals. And when I first signed up for Beauty Counter and there, oh my gosh, there's my dog. And there have been several, I'm like, what is moving in the background? Um, there have been several different points within this business where I have had three other jobs besides beauty counter. And you know, that's a little crazy. I'm not saying you have to do that. Um, but like I did not obviously have the amount of hours to spend on beauty counter. So we thought we would take a moment and just share with you kind of our situations and how many hours we spend on beauty counter per week. So like I mentioned at the beginning, my top job is being a mom. And so all else, like when, when poop is hitting the fan, like literally beauty counter and everything else just goes and sits on the back burner for a little bit. You know, like my, my child really takes the most <laughs> amount of time. Um, but with beauty counter, I now have a team of over a hundred women, um, and I'm a, an executive director. And I would say some weeks I only work five hours. Some weeks I work 20, but majority of the time I am spending on my own business, even having a team that large. Um, and so I, you know, my goals, I have, pretty big goals that I set for myself on a personal level. Um, and so depending on where I am in the month and what I want to earn that month, that's how hard I push myself. And sometimes I'm like, you know what? I, I don't have it in me this month. And it's nice that I have that flexibility that I can kind of scale it back. Or like last month at the very end, it's like, you know what? I want to earn more. Here we go. <laughs> and you can step on the gas. Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about this. I, um, when I started out, I was probably doing like 
five hours a week. And I would say now I am more around the 10 to 15 hours a week. But like Kate said, depending on the week, depending on the month, that can vary greatly. Um, we have moved since joining Beauty Counter, we have moved two times um, and not just like moved houses, moved across the country and then across the country in an ocean. And <laughs> in, the, in both of those times when we moved, I basically like did, was not able to do very much. Um, I didn't have the mental capacity to do it. And so it did, it went on the back burner. Um, and what I think the thing that after the first move, um, the thing that kind of gave me the clue, like this could actually be like a really great, great business is that I didn't do a single thing in January of 2018 and I got a paycheck and I was like, what? Now here's, here's the deal. I had done work the months prior. And so it was like some of that work finally coming to fruition or people reordering. Um, but so it does, this work can ebb and flow with your life and you can work it in to things you're already doing. So I drop off samples in the mail as I'm going to take my son to preschool. We go on a walk and I drop, I will carry bags of products down to neighbors and I will drop it off at their house. I'll pick it up two days later on my walk home. <laughs> so things like that. If you're at swim practice, if you're, you know, at pickup for your school, your kid's school, if you're at the gym, yoga class, you just work this into the time and the spaces that you have. So I just love how flexible it is. And it's huge, huge for me and my crazy, my husband's in the military. I don't think I said that at the beginning, but nuts. I want to just interject here and say Lauren is going to be our representative for Hawaii and DC next month, which is super exciting. Um, and I'm really proud of you. And I think everybody who's listening should know that. And so listen to what she's doing in her business because she gets to go in DC and lobby. So she's. She's got some valuable tips to share. I like that. And she earned that. So that was an opportunity afforded to all consultants. Every other year, Beauty Counter has this um, program where you can earn points and the top point earners from each state get to go. And so Lauren earned it for her state, my home state. So I'm super happy for her. She worked really hard and so deserving of it. What I'm about like you, Naomi? You got to share with us hours because you have the full-time job so we, need, full -time we job. need to hear you <laughs> I have a full-time job but I am fortunate that for my full-time job I've worked from home for the past eight years so um dispelling myths about working from home I'm still really busy I work for a global company so I work with people all over the world so some days I am up super early meeting with people from Europe other days I am up late at night having meetings with people in Asia but just like these ladies throughout the day I find pockets in my day to to try and follow up with people. I, I kind of every Sunday take about 15 minutes to write up a plan about, you know, who it is I want to follow up with, some new people I want to reach out to, conversations I want to have. And so I have that written down in my notebook here. And so when I'm in between meetings or I'm on a lunch break, I'll pull it out and I will just fire off, you know, a couple of emails, text messages, make phone calls, however I reach out to people. I do want to say that we have some fantastic new technology coming out soon that both Lauren and Kate have seen that is really going to take a lot of that admin work off of our shoulders in that we don't have to keep track of it anymore. The system will notify us when those activities should be happening. So we literally just have to log into our back end system and our reminders will be there and telling us what it is we need to do. So I really feel that the technology that we have coming out this month is going to take all of that off our plates. A lot of that overwhelm that I know a lot of consultants feel. So it really will just allow us to focus on sharing the mission through, um, through however it is we do. Perfect. All right. So we do have something fun and exciting to share. If you are listening to this in real time, meaning the beginning of March 2020, um, we do have a promotion going on where you can actually get a free enrollment kit. So if you're a Band of Beauty member currently, it would be $69 to you because they do subtract off that $29 that you paid for the Band of Beauty membership. And if you shopped at the end of February, you have double credits <laughs> that you could use to spend. 
um, with the purchase of a starter set. So this is valid until March 8th. So again, March 8th, 2020. Um, in the starter sets, we have three different tiered packages, so you can definitely work with the consultant that um, that invited you to this call to see, you know, how do you envision running this business and which of those packages is going to make the most sense for you, or you can go Lauren style and be like, give me it all at the deepest discount possible. <laughs> I would not suggest making the mistake that I did, which was just like 80 or I was $85. That's how old I am in this company. It wasn't even the price that it is now. It's just like, I'll just do this. Um, because it does end up, you do end up spending a lot more to get, to get those products because I will say having those products to get into people's hands. I mean, if you're here, you've likely tried products again, unless you're Naomi style. Um, and so you know that our products perform and sometimes it's just a matter of getting someone, you know, counter time and letting them try it and letting them know, hey, this is going to give you anti-aging effects without retinol. Um, so Friday, also this is time sensitive, Friday is going to be our full day. Um, so it's going to be 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. Pacific time. So you might have to adjust that to your time zone. It's going to be our lead 2.0. So usually lead is only available to women who are in person, director and above, or maybe an emerging leader that earned the training. But this year it is going to be available to everyone via a live stream really really exciting to get all of that like valuable training and content i know last year i left there and i was like pumped my mom was concerned about me when i got home um so that's going to be free to the consultant base so if you are like i want all of the training and i want it right now this is the perfect time to join um so one of the last things that we wanted to talk, talk about before we open up to Q&A is just who should become a consultant. You might be sitting here and saying, this all sounds great, but I don't know if I'm the right fit for this. So we want to talk a little bit about who should become a consultant. Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about this. I, as you guys can tell, I'm super passionate about this mission. I think that it is, it is something that needs to change. And if you are with me and you get it and you understand that like if we aren't talking about it that we aren't going to be able to make significant change um, then jump in you are ready for this so that's the first thing is if you are passionate about the mission if you use and love the products this could be a really really great benefit opportunity for you because you're gonna you're probably already talking about the products to your friends and family and sharing about them um, and so if you are doing that, you're enjoying and you're sharing what you love and you enjoy sharing, educating your friends and family, this is gonna be a great opportunity for you as well. Um, if you want to improve the health of others, if you just wanna make a little bit of extra cash, I always joke that you need to be passionate about one of the three things, the mission, the products, or money, in order to make a good consultant. So, um, I love that. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> and then I think that the, key traits of a successful consultant, because a lot of people will ask that, what is it that makes a successful consultant? And it's consistency. Whatever, however you choose to do this business, whichever direction you choose to take with it, if you are consistent and your client base and your new customers understand what you're doing with this business, then you're gonna see success with it. Um, and I, I think that's something that the three of us have seen grow our business like nothing else is just the consistency piece and um, that is going to resonate and show with the, your clients friends customers 100%. Um, yeah so i think that's all that we have are there any questions anybody want to type anything into the chat box any questions you have I know one question that is usually brought um, is around social media. So, you know, do you have to be on social media? Do you have to use social media? Do one of you two want to answer that first? I definitely have a take on this, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I kind of shared earlier with how I started out. Um, besides the like few posts on social media, it's been in person. And to be honest, my business has grown in person. Um, I, I connect with people in person. I might, it my online stuff, things that I share, that really just helps to cultivate and um, 
the relationships that I've built in person and remind people that I'm doing beauty counter if I'm not living in the same state as them anymore. So um, it absolutely can be done completely 100% in person. Yes, I love having your perspective, especially because I have built a lot of beauty counter from social media. So, but it's, but it's different than people think because it's actually what Lauren just said. It was from, it's really from fostering the relationships that I built in person through my nutrition business before I did beauty counter. So I had started building a business before I actually, like I mentioned, I was kind of using affiliate links, but I was really focused on helping people with nutrition and doing one-on-one -on -one nutritional therapy and had built out and I had gone to trade shows. I worked at a gym. I had done all of the parts of beauty counter that you know, really do help people build a beauty counter business just a couple years prior. And because nutrition weaves so well into what you're talking about with beauty counter. So if you do have some type of nutrition background or you're working to build, maybe to become a health coach of some sort, these two link together. <laughs> um, the people who are learning about food end up learning about, you know, the beauty and skincare, or maybe they learn about that first. And then they're like, you know what, I should clean up my food products too. They just kind of marry back and forth. And really how I use beauty counter now or beauty counter. And now how I use social media is I consider it my marketing. It's it is where I teach. I don't say, Hey, swipe up here to buy the lipstick I'm wearing. I, you will not see any of those cheesy, gimmicky, like sales tactics on my social media. It's, Hey, here's a safer lipstick. Let me tell you what we know about like heavy metals and lipsticks and what beauty counter is doing to ensure that our products don't have them. I'm always using that education piece. And so when I'm talking about coming from a place of service, social media is part of how I service my clients. Um, it's either giving tips of how to use products or you know, just helping them figure out what they're missing in their routine. You know, it's just really a place where I'm continuing that education and that service piece. Um, but it is not like, you know, post a link and make a thousand dollars, which I think it's, it's like, wow, wouldn't that be lovely? I would love that too. Um, but that's just not, not necessarily how it works. So um, thank you, Lauren, because you can totally be off social media or you can view it like I do. It's, it's one of the creative pieces and I love to be creative. So that's why I enjoy using social media and that's why I'm on it. Not because I feel like I have to, or that's just where my business is. Um, if I got off the social media, I would venture to say that a lot of my sales would still be very much the same because I do focus on that customer service piece. I don't know if I'm seeing any questions, but I could be wrong. Anyone who's, who's on the call, if you guys want to chat anything that we either didn't cover that you've been worried about, um, I think, you know, we did, we did touch on a lot of different points. Um, but if nobody really has anything, we just want to make sure that we remind you all that that free enrollment with Starter Set Purchase is going to go until March 8th. And then this Friday, March 6th, is that lead incentive. So definitely take a moment to reach out to the consultant that invited you to this call and let them know, hey, I got to hear from your friends, Kate, Naomi, and Lauren. <laughs> They're kind of weird, but... Um, <laughs> um, and just maybe something that you learned about it. If you do have lingering questions, if you want to ask them, like Naomi had mentioned, what's your mentoring style? What starter set do you recommend? It's great to just have that conversation. Or you might be thinking, you know what? This sounds like a little too much for me. Let them know so then they, they don't have to sit here and wonder um, or keep checking in with you. Just keep that open dialogue and communication because um, we're all here to help each other. All right. That's my spiel. What do, what do you two have? <laughs> no, I think that that was great. The only thing I was going to add was, you know, if this, if it doesn't seem like something that you want to maybe make a business out of, the Bandit Beauty program is really a great mm -hmm. option for you. Um, you still get that 10% or 10% product credit that you can use later. You get the free shipping. So there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, and so it may not be the right, right fit for everybody to become a consultant. And that's okay. Like there's no... I only want people to become consultants if they really want to do it. 
Other, otherwise, it's stressful for you. It, it's just not not worth it. So it's what makes it's another reason beauty counter is different is because we don't have like everybody who just is you know, maybe interested in the products has to become a consultant. And then it does end up becoming, you know, like you're sucking people in and you're tricking them. Be a band of beauty member. If you're still thinking, you know what, I am talking about this and I do want to take it a step further. You know, the consultant is a great opportunity. But I do want to say, if you do decide that I might want to try this out, I don't know what's going to happen. It's okay because we don't have monthly requirements, but we do have a six month requirement. And if you decide after six months, this is not for me, the only thing that happens is that you become a Band of Beauty member. So you'll have the opportunity to get a starter kit at 40 to 44% discount. And that's especially great. I tell my, my customers, I'm like, if you want to get counter time, the collection for just a little bit more and you can get a starter kit and get all the collection. So, you know, if that fits your needs right now, that's something to consider, but six months, try it out, enjoy the discount, and it's not for you, then just you default to become a Band of Beauty member. And I have had team members who have done that. And I'm super proud of them because they tried it out and they really made, you know, conscious effort. And they decided like, you know what, I love the brand. I love the products, but I don't want to be a consultant and I'm okay being a Band of Beauty member. I'm like, that's fantastic. That's great. I still hear from them all the time. So, you know, I, it, it is a, I think it's a low risk opportunity. That's going to be up to you to decide if that is for you, but there's no penalty and nothing bad happens if you try it out and decide that this is not something that you want to do. Awesome. Totally. Well, on one last note, I just have to show you guys my pants. <laughs> I actually, um, one of my band of beauty members sent them to me. She was like, I saw these bands inside of you. <laughs> and I forgot I had them until right before the stall. So oh, that's awesome. Secrets. <laughs> I like it. All right, perfect. Well, this will be recorded. So we will send out the recording to you, to you if you missed a piece, if you were making dinner, if something was going on, kid having a meltdown. Um, if there's anything you want to go back and listen to again. Otherwise, thank you all for joining us or for listening to this recording. Have a thank great you. day, guys.